everybody knows that the the gladiator movies um hunter we're looking uh uh today at uh i have some requests football mm-hmm. requests since yeah. the nfl won't do it maybe i can get the xfl to the do xfl it? to do some of my football rules requests yes let's, go see, right ahead. let's see some of the things that you would be be for or not for mm-hmm. what you think good idea or bad idea good idea i or want bad idea. Live helmet cams. Oh, you're talking about like how the referees sometimes have helmet cameras, right? And, or the referees, there's no reason the referees in the NFL shouldn't have them. Yeah. Um, and why do they not wear helmets and all that mess? I don't know themselves. You know yeah, what I mean? Just blasted. in case. Um. Uh. But I'm talking about. Uh, there was a point. There was a video game too. Mm-hmm. Uh, back in the day where they put the camera in the helmet basically, and uh, and you played that way. But there was a point. I think XFL, one of these, maybe even tried it once. But they yeah. had that the helmet cams. But even just for replay, not even not even if you, I want we one day it'll be live. Yeah, I'll one say. day. But like right now, they could easily put the cameras in there, and mm-hmm. I think they can do some type of a replay system where you can uh, watch what the players were seeing in their helmets. That's my number one request. Yeah, for football, you like dislike? I have no problem with it. Because if you can switch, that's one thing that football does a really good job of right now is the multiple camera angles that they're able to bring you. Mm-hmm. Basketball, you're kind of limited just based on, you know, the space in the arena. But football, you can have cameras up at the very top if you really wanted to. They have that one camera that slides across the line. It's almost like a, the sky camera. You know, I, I would be all for it. For yeah. God's sakes, they even have they have cameras in the pylon well, now. Why not? The XFL was the first to do the, uh, the sky camera, if you didn't know the that. The original XFL. Mm-hmm. The original XFL, not the now, yeah, but not the one I'm, now. They're, but they're doing it now. You know, it's they ha- they have a lot of opportunities to try different things because it is brand new. You know, why not? Mm-hmm. And I heard somebody, I think it was Troy Aikman. They interviewed Troy Aikman. He was at the Dallas game, and he was on the sidelines, and he said he wouldn't be surprised if some of this stuff was implemented in the NFL within the few years, just because like like the play clock. Play clock, or yeah, the but to get to the lines, only 25 seconds right. speeds up the game instead right. of what is it, the 40 seconds in the NFL, right? And the being able to speak into the helmets, he said he it wouldn't be surprised. He likes the fact that they can talk to him the whole time and it doesn't cut off like it does in the NFL when there's about 15 seconds left in the game clock. I don't like that. He's I like, he, but he I like said, the he, cut off, but he says don't just limit it to the quarterbacks, let everybody I have, say, have everything like in their Cause, heads because that takes away. The quarterback making the adjustments and puts it way more on the coaches and not on the field. So you know it takes away from Peyton Manning walking up to the line and Tom Brady walking up the line, going, you know, I read this, I read this, and instead you got a coach. Well, reading, I mean, they you could, got a coach reading. If you if you got a quarterback that's skilled enough to do it, then I don't see why the head coach would take that away from him. But if you've got a young quarterback oh, still help. trying to they'll develop, it's help. be it'll be fine. And think about it; it's not only on like the it. offensive side. I don't the like defense. You got a young quarterback. He sucks. Let's no, tear his head I'm, off. I'm all for it because even then you got to think it, it's not the <laughs> offensive, not only the offensive players. You put you get in on the defensive players as well. Cornerbacks got it. Defensive linemen have got it. They can make adjustments on the fly. I think it just it makes it mm-hmm. even more of a chess. Now match. doing that changes it totally changes. Um, it just makes it more of a chess game match. as opposed to games at other levels. If you would do that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, well, all right. I'm, I'm uh, really here's some sure other about ones. that. Yeah, I won't. We talked about this the other day. Mm-hmm. You didn't agree. I won't. No punting rule. No, can't do it. No punting rule. First no, downs are it. none. Uh, get out. Get keep going on the field. The other team gets it. Goes the other way. I, I think that would be. Uh, it would add so much drama. Can't do it uh, to the games. Can't do it. I'm fine with the no field goals. I'm fine with that. Now the field goals, I, I, I like the score. Well, it, well, I punting, tell you, it's I not you the no field goal. Sorry, it's no extra points. You have to go for okay, it, yeah, like I a like one, that. two, or a three. I like that. Field goals, I, yeah, it's fine. Even though a guy missed, a, shanked a 35 yarder, then mm. goes out there next pl- next time and drills a 55 yarder. It makes no sense. But I, I want no illegal contact downfield, no quarterback slides, and hockey like penalty boxes on personal fouls. We've agreed on the hockey like penalty calls, and then we've agreed also. On that. Did you see the Marquette King punt? That was disgusting. That that punt I, was awesome. I want someone anywhere in any town of America or wherever to sit down and fully explain to me mm-hmm. why, with a straight face why the punting counted. touch rules. But what do you mean the punting touch rules? The fact that if it the can't ball go bounces, past the 35? If the ball ba- no, 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 no. If I'm punting, Hunter, yeah, and my teammate slaps the ball on the 15, Mm-hmm. 
and it goes in the end zone. Yeah. Where are they going to put the ball? At the 35. That's If I touch the ball on the 15-yard line. Yeah, it's a rule. It's like it's... And it rolls in the end zone. Yeah, it's to prevent touchbacks. They would put the ball they, back the ball the 15 would go, where they well, touched it. That's what I'm saying. The rules now are in the XFL is even anything right, that goes out of bounds. I'm talking about NFL. NFL. Foot, in football. Yeah. When you punt the ball. Oh, when you, and, and you touch you're, it You're talking the, about the defense right. slapping it out. That's okay, right. yeah. If I punt the ball yeah, and my teammate goes down to cover and he touches the ball at the 25-yard line and it rolls into the end zone, mm-hmm. they would put that ball at the 25. Right. If I touch it at the two-yard line and it goes in the end zone, they call it a touchback. touchback. What I want to know is, where is the line? Is there a certain yard line? Is there a certain rule that the ball has to stop? You see what I'm saying? They All the time, the, the defenders will like say, touch it at the 40, it'll roll back to the 20, and they'll, they'll, they'll say, well, it's down at first mm-hmm. touch. Right. But that doesn't count. First touch doesn't count if you do it at the one yard line or two yard line. That that highly that's the most that may be the most confusing rule about football that I do not understand how it works at all. Mm-hmm. And and maybe someone could explain it better. But but I, I think I'm getting the gist of what I'm trying to say across. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I know what you're saying. Like that, that I get aggravates. It. I get it. But I, I kind of like the XFL's rule where it's like no matter like you have to at least punt the ball to where it's playable. Mm-hmm. You know because it for it's. That's the one thing the XFL doesn't want are dead plays. Mm-hmm. They don't want no action. They want to be – that's the whole entertainment value of it. They want to bring back the the punt return being special, the kick return being right. special, which I can understand that, and I, and I like that. Uh, I know that takes away from a spectacular punt that Marquette King had. Good Lord. But <laughs> it was disgusting. It was punt, disgusting. If you, if you like – I mean, punt yeah, if you can call a punt disgusting, it was that thing just sailed. Sailed, but here's the thing: I understand wanting to give somebody the return man at least an opportunity because then it's like his job's wasted. You know, it's like what is he good for? The guy's just gonna punt it towards the back of the end zone, anyways. Yeah, I I, I completely understand it. And how exciting did it used to be when Devin Hester would have an opportunity to run one back? So I'm all for it, man. Well, I tell you what, I I um I I expected to see more trickery. Triggeration. Yeah, I you think, think they would. They, they would have encouraged that mm-hmm. more. Um, I, I did. I did see you were talking about the time, the practice time, and everything. Mm-hmm. And Jerry Glanville. I can't believe he's out there coaching. Oh goodness! <laughs> I met Jerry Glanville. Yeah. In the Falcons Hotel. Uh huh. In about nineteen eighty eight, eighty nine ish, when they still had the red uniforms. Deion Sanders was on the team. Yeah. Actually, nope. Let me back that up. They just switched the black uniform. So if you can figure out whatever year that was, because Andre Risen was there. Yeah. And I saw Andre Risen, but I didn't get a chance to get his autograph. I got the other wide receiver's autograph at the time. It was um, Michael. Oh, God, I can't remember. Michael something. He was good. Uh, Got his autograph and Jerry Glanville's autograph. Glanville's wearing a cowboy hat walking out of there. Yeah. And uh, we we just happened to be staying there at the same hotel, and and that's their training. That was their training camp practice facility hotel all in one. Uh, but I thought that was neat. But Jerry Glanville was out there talking about how uh, they or, or or simplifying the offenses was a more. Well, there, there's one of the coaches that's got yeah. a West Coast type of offense, and they and they were, and I recognized when they were calling some of the plays and how they did it. It's it's, it's a lot. We did a lot of that in high school where you would say a word instead of ten words, basically. So. Mm-hmm. That would be the whole play. Yeah. So we're running Gator instead of quarterback. In, instead of going, you know, split left, uh, whatever. Yeah. X Y Z. I blah, like blah, blah, that. Blah. Do you like so, that part of the broadcast that you can hear the calls coming down? Kind of, sorta. Um, my only question is how that affects the gambling. And and, and in this hundred, we see teams cheat all the time at certain levels. Yeah. Is there going to be someone sitting in the in one of the TV booths? Listening to that other play calls and stuff, and be like, "Hey guys, they're they're running this. Right, Tiger is a split left or, or whatever." Yeah, but See the thing I mean? is, is you know, I worry about the gambling part on that. The the only thing that I'm like, oh, I'm just fine with it <laughs> because if if they have a guy that's watching the TV broadcast, you know, there's a delay on it. So just because you can hear him call that play down doesn't mm-hmm. mean that if you're scouting for the team that they're playing, doesn't mean that you're going to get the co- the call in time be, to be able to tell the defense mm-hmm. exactly what they're running. So now you can make mental notes of what they are what they're doing on the field when that's called, 
But here's the thing. You're not sitting in that war. You're not sitting in the offensive coordinator room when you are actually playing the team. So you're not hearing what the call is. Right. You just have to go off of what the what they're doing at the line. You just got to read just what the offensive formation is. So I was fine with it, and I was definitely fine with definitely the transparency they were trying to bring when it came to reviews on penalties, how they would go up and actually show the review team working on it. I was right. I was fine with that, too. That, that was pretty cool. We're showing uh, the folks online. Uh, that if you if you're you know of course listen to the podcast you can't see but you can go back and watch on uh, Facebook I'm showing the uh, touchdown scoring plays for, yeah. for the so the folks on Facebook can uh, can see the scoring plays and, and on YouTube and everything. Um, as far as uh, anything you know anything else specific like you saw different or or, or let's talk about the kickoffs. Yeah. Um, you, you like, don't like, do like, I like kickoffs. the kickoffs. I, and that's and that's where one thing I, I was surprised we didn't see a, a more um, triggeration is what I got on that because the kickoffs I think with with it being new, yeah, and nobody's ever seen anything. It, it opens it up to a lot of being able to do a lot of trick plays right. with those. Uh, now, and I do have a question, and you you might not even be able to answer it. Mm. What's the rules on the double forward pass on the kickoff? I have no idea. I'm seriously. There I, used I don't to be know. a rule in football. You ever heard the fair catch pass rule type thing? No, you used huh? to, you used to could catch the pass, catch a kick. Yeah. And as long as your feet weren't mo- moving, never moved, you could throw it. You no, ever played that no, one before? Huh? That that style. No. That's that's some backyard rules right there. But I we were always I was wondering if if they had any uh, fun rules like that. So anyway, uh, some of the t- some of the games we'll go over real quick. Uh, I'll stop the video for that. XFL stats. Uh, New York Guardians twenty three to three over the Vipers. All of this can be found on XFL dot com. McGlowan, uh, fifteen to twenty nine, one eighty two. Mer in the win for the Guardians. I, I I probably need to say that on everybody because yeah. we won't know who plays for who. And the loss for the Tampa Bay Vipers. Uh, D Smith. They, they don't want me. Uh, the, what they are lacking right now in is internet. They they've got a good setup, but but there's things like you can't click on certain things. Like I can't click and find out that guy's name if I want. They just got uh, they got to just work on the layout of the website, right? And uh, uh, their links for statistics. But I mean, on stat they links. give they give you the stats if you just want to go by last names. It's fine, right? The only one I know right there that you're talking about is Aaron Murray, and he got benched. Receiving for the Vipers, Williams had nine catches, 123 yards. Yeah, uh, they had the big the big. Uh, Yards and everything, they had way more yards, it seemed like. I remember watching part of this game, and uh, Glanville was talking about the two touchdowns they gave up, Hunter, mm-hmm. were both miscommunications. One of them was a cover three. The corner came up and wasn't supposed to. I can't remember what he said on the other one. So, uh, according to Glanville, that, that score should have been probably closer to 15, like all field goals, yeah. 15 to 30. Well, here's another thing, too. Uh, the two turnovers killed him. Then they came early. Mm-hmm. Early, Aaron Murray, he threw a pick in the end zone. That could have been a touchdown for the Vipers. Uh, you know, defensive DB just jumps and jumps the pass. It could have been a big touchdown for the Vipers. Funny thing is the Vipers are the ones that had the best odds this year, uh, you know, Did they? over seven and a half games went to win, mm-hmm. and they, they come up losing their first one. So, you know, that, that's a hard way to start the season. They still have nine <laughs> games to go, though, so that would be all right. Is it, here's one for Hunter. Yeah. Retweet if your team is still undefeated in XFL history. Nice, <laughs> man. An, I, can, I can retweet tweet that, tweet one. On that one. I can retweet that one. <laughs> I really can. Oh, that's funny. Uh, I, I like them playing. Like, uh, Hunter wants to talk his St. Louis Battlehawks, who won in the fifth in the field goal contest. Uh, Fifteen. Well, it wasn't the field goal contest. Not right. at all. That was Not one a, touchdown. Was one touchdown. Um, and was thrown by Tamu. Uh, he was pretty. I thought Tamu played touchdowns, well. Actually, yeah, he. I think he. I can't. We can't. That, that's hard. Well, you I, never I was know. judging off. I was judging off the score, and I totally forgot yeah. two, three, Twos four, and five threes. point, whatever they are. Yeah. Uh, so fifteen to nine. If you can find, that, well, here's the thing. <laughs> I've got this, the scores. This was the fun. Line. This was the fun part. So so Dallas came in because they have it on the screen. The stuff that you can bet on. Dallas was a nine oh. and a half. They were a nine and a half point favorite, and it was the over under was like fifty two. So if you bet the under and yeah. you bet St. Louis to cover nine and a half, you got it. I got you Hunter, got it. I got a predictive true or false for you today. Okay, predictive true or false. This is, a, this is a Nostradamus true or false. 
So you have to put your I have to put my thinking cap hat. Okay. True or false? The DC Defenders. Yeah. Or the Dallas Renegades will win an XFL title yeah, before, before the, the Washington the, Redskins or the or Dallas, Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys. As, okay, you said true Now they or got false. better chances. True it's or false. One, it's two, it's yeah. one and four, actually. Yeah, true or false, I'm going true. True. True, because DC's looked so good, man. <laughs> they came out, won their game 31-19. to 19. Their offense was electric. <laughs> Defense played really good. But when it comes to St. Louis, you know, obviously – this is the first first game, the first season of XFL, and I have been a, now a self-proclaimed Battlehawk fan because I think their <laughs> logo is sick, and I like Jordan Tamu. It's um, like something out of the Navy. But he he had a great game, you know, 20 for 27, 74% completion, and not only did he do it through the air with a touchdown, he had no interceptions, and he had 209 yards in the air, but he had 77 rushing yards from is a quarterback. Is that Cameron Artis Payne? Yeah. Cameron Artis he threw a pass, completed a pass, yeah. 10-yard pass. Well, there's a little bit of trickery there. So, overall, How yardage. How do you come out of the NFL and you only get I know. Overall you yardage two for carries. Tamu. Overall yardage for Tamu was like 284. Is that Lance yeah. Dunbar? Yeah, Lance Dunbar running back. Matt Jones run, starting running back for the Battlehawks. Was Listen, the Washington I'm telling you, for the, a little while. The, the running backs, these these college kids uh, sitting on these rosters, the, the, these college rosters, I mean, running backs, the, these people will pay. Mm-hmm. Think about that. So between those five, they had eight, nine people that that rushed the ball yesterday in that one game along Battle Hawks yeah. and Renegades. Um, Hunter, Hunter and I've been talking a, a bit. They, they've got they don't have a college rule like you can come out of high school and play in this league. Um, somebody somewhere, especially I think a running back is going to take chances on this league. Uh, right? I think it would be smart, and I think the XFL could really thrive if they didn't make any rule like the mm-hmm. NFL does, where you have to go three years to college right. and this. This is why we were, we brought it up a little bit before we came on the show, and I and I took it from a podcast that I had listened to on my way here to do our show today, and it's like the XFL obviously week one had a great week. They had like three point three million view viewers. No, maybe it might have been even thirty three million. No. I just knew it was a th- three and a three, and it was a million. Okay, so that's obviously great outreach, and it really helps because of the the channels that they're being played on: ABC, ESPN, Fox Sports. You know, they have a good fan base, and, and they're accessible to everybody. But I agreed Hunter, with the podcast. I have seen more XFL yeah. games than Charlotte Hornet games this year. Think On television? What, absolutely. Think about what I just said. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Opening weekend of the XFL, and I live in Charlotte, and I have regular TV. I don't have I don't have cable. Um, I have seen now officially more XFL, XFL games, games than, than Charlotte, Charlotte Hornet, Hornet games. And... That's what they have to do to generate excitement. But I agreed with this, and I told you this as well. They What they're struggling with right now is star power. The biggest name that they had in Landry Jones, who was the first one that they signed to the XFL, was mm-hmm. supposed to be the quarterback of the Renegades, and he ends up getting hurt. Second biggest was probably Cardell Jones, and they, everybody just knows him from Ohio State and winning a national championship there. So they have small, like, small star names, and they have some names that you recognize. Like for me, Matt Jones. He was a running back in Washington for a few years. I recognize that name. You recognize the running back's names. Like Cameron, Cameron Artis Payne was here, did a little stint in Carolina. So there are some names that you notice, but all it's going to take is just like how the USFL worked. That one guy, Herschel Walker, mm. ends up going to the USFL mm. and then goes to the NFL. All it takes is maybe – well, the, and the this Maurice is way Claret out there. Situation. All it takes is a James Wiseman hunter. Yeah, is the NCAA telling what if what if what if the NCAA would came ha- hard down? Think about this: if the XFL came out two years ago, mm-hmm. and the and the NCAA came down hard on Carolina and Chaz and them for the shoes and the selling yeah. the shoes, Chaz Surratt could be a quarterback right now in the XFL. Player right? I'm not the mistaken. It was just like he that. was. I know he's a player in the league. What team he plays for, I cannot remember. They had a story on ESPN.com. A few weeks ago, I talked about it. He got dismissed from West Virginia's football team if mm-hmm. he wanted to play again in college because he still has college eligibility. He only has one year, but he has to sit out for a year. So Instead, two years yeah, so penalty. technically two year penalty. Instead of him doing that, he's playing in the XFL this year, building up uh, a building up a a, a, a tape reel, and he's going to go to the NFL and well, try for the NFL. Well, say draft. he gets seventy five to one hundred thousand dollars in two years playing in the NFL. Then he, if he doesn't, yeah, if he doesn't get NFL. Uh, right, 
job. He can always use that money to get back to community college and, and finish what he's doing. The thing PJ he, Walker's the quarterback for the Roughnecks. Yeah. 23 of 39, 272, four touchdowns and a pick. PJ Walker. For the Houston Roughnecks. And PJ Walker played at Temple. He played at Temple. So, like, he didn't play at a huge school, but he got an opportunity here. And if that can translate in the XFL, right. maybe it could translate to the NFL. A lot of these guys are probably going to get NFL looks when the AAF dissolved. I know Cleveland was a team that went out and signed an AAF, AAF quarterback to be a backup mm-hmm. to Baker. So, you know, there's a lot. If you don't support the league, you really should. And this is not just me saying that because I, I love the idea of it. It's not bad football. And what I heard somebody say is, well, how is the season going? How, how is the league going to do when March hits? Because we're going to have March Madness. And I'm thinking, well, I think it's going to survive because these games are played Saturdays and Sundays. Why and there are only two games. Why didn't Josh Johnson play this weekend? Well, I'm not sure. It's it's showing Kanoff and McClendon played. Yeah. Kanoff played the whole game. Well, Josh Johnson, I think Josh Johnson was a late addition to was Los he? Angeles. He's only been there. Well, and then that, and one of the, I think the quarterback that they have now, or that they played, Kanoff, he was, he was, they said he was only in camp for five weeks because he was a trade. They traded okay. for him from New York. So Houston wins 37 17. Guardian, New York Gar- over the Wild, LA Wildcats. New York Guardians win 23 3 over Tampa Bay Vipers. And the Dallas Renegades fall at home. Uh, to the St. Louis Battlehawks. That was hey, there. You go. Well, you're gonna say the Battlehawks one and zero on the <laughs> season, and they're one and zero on road games, and the only team to win a road game in the opening weekend. So hey, future look at that. future XFL future champion, XFL champion. DC I'm buying defenders. A shirt. I don't know about that. DC defenders. Now look, I'll, 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 I like DC just because you know <laughs> this is what's so funny. On the podcast I mm-hmm. listened to, one of them, he's grown up a Redskins fan, mm-hmm. and he said, I had more fun at this XFL game in D.C. than I have had in 20 years at FedEx <laughs> watching the oh, Redskins. Let's see if I took that picture right or not. Let me check, let me check, let me check. Hunter. So, look, just just for me to say it again, support the XFL. It's got a lot of, it's got a lot of things oh, to like about it and a lot of opportunities for other guys to come up. But that's what I mean. All I'm saying is all it's going to take is maybe a Trevor Lawrence to forego his junior season because he doesn't want to get injured for free, go and get paid and play in the XFL, and then go to the NFL. Everybody knows what his tape is from college already. Why not go and do it against guys that had an opportunity at the next level and show out? That's all I'm saying. That's all it's going to take, and it'll blow up. It will blow up. Austin Prohl, Ricky's son. Yeah, he uh, played. Five catches, 88 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, for Austin Pro, and think I, about it. It, it. I think he's a slot receiver. He I'm might gonna, get a look. I'm going to be calling them the East East Lincoln Dragons forever. Because of their number, because of their they, colors. They, yeah, they look exactly like East Lincoln, except they got a dragon logo instead of the instead of the horse on their helmet. I liked it. And see, it's one of those things too, where like I obviously didn't get to see all of the games. I, you know, I was just busy throughout the day, but I would turn it on, and what I saw, I liked. What I saw, I liked, because it's football. If you don't like watching football, I can't help you. You're not going to watch it anyways. But think about: football. Are you gonna are you gonna watch football next this coming weekend, or are you gonna watch a regular season NBA game? Maybe even the All Star well, game, which is garbage. Watch, not gonna be able to watch the Hornets. But exactly. <laughs> oh, it is All Star weekend. Yeah, it is All Star weekend. We do got to talk about that. We can talk about that closer to it. And just yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. what is it? It's uh, the game's win. Well, the rookie stuff's Friday night, and Saturday yeah. night. Saturday night is yeah. We'll definitely uh, be able to talk about it. Saturday is the dunk and the three point contest. We'll break down with Terry and the gang on Saturday. You Friday think? we'll do what whatever we can on that. Yeah. Um, the uh, Hunter you was talking about the Redskins fans as opposed to the Defenders fans. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did see, and I meant to screenshot it, but I obviously didn't. That Redskins tickets were actually said in different parts of the stadium are lower. Than XFL than tickets. Than XFL tickets in certain parts of the stadium, especially in the upper deck. They, mm-hmm. There were $4 yeah. at one point this year. The rest is, I think, the lowest that the, the XFL was selling them were 10 Well, and they play, they're they playing in a smaller stadium. They're playing where the D.C. United team plays, the soccer team. Uh, it's at, like, Audi Stadium or uh, Audi Arena. Mm-hmm. So th- that's pretty nice, too, because then, it, you know, if you're not, you're not going to have a lot of people probably at first. So it's, it makes the stadium look more filled up, what's which the, is fine. What's your spread in a Redskins versus Defenders game? I think <laughs> I'm not going to <laughs> I'm not going to disrespect the NFL, but mm-hmm. I do think it would be at least an eight point game. I think it would be Redskins minus eight. 
but I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot. Con- but here's the thing. That's only because Washington's got a lot, like the Redskins, they have a lot of talent on the defensive side of the mm-hmm. ball. And they have high draft picks on the offensive side of the ball. If they can just get it clicking, they could really do some damage. But D.C. didn't look bad. And it's the XFL. It, it, they'll, they'll have that conversation forever. Which team can beat which team? They do the same thing with can Alabama beat the worst team in NFL. <laughs> they do the same thing. every. And we've got to remember, those are NFL players right, at the end can't. of the day. They those can't. are those guys. Those are the be- those are the best players from college <laughs> at the next level. Yeah, they can't. But it's just fun to just yeah. Uh, oh, I know. Talk, talk <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, so let's see. Defenders games were f- were anywhere. F- the defenders tickets were from twenty four to one hundred and seventy dollars per ticket. So twenty four was the lowest ticket. Well, right. that's not bad. Twenty four dollars for a ticket. You go for two yeah, people. That's yeah. six people at a Redskins game. Yeah. <laughs> People, Dan one, Snyder making a lot of money. Ticket. Making a lot of money at the at the Defenders game. The lowest price ticket at the Defenders game is six times more expensive. I don't know. Now price look, I don't know if they do it in game. this league, but it would not surprise me because you know every league they love like little trophies to give out. They love awards. <laughs> Cardell Jones, <laughs> early MVP favorite. Awesome. Early MVP favorite for the XFL season one, Cardell Jones, quarterback of the DC Defenders. He had a great game. We're the, Sixteen for twenty six, two hundred and thirty five so yards, in the season. two touchdowns, <laughs> dude. Yeah, but what a, they talk about MVP stuff after week two sometimes. They talk about Heisman before mm. the season even starts in college football. So why not? Why not? That'd be the first time that DC has an <laughs> MVP in a long time. <laughs> Is Mosley the last MVP? Maybe. Is he the only now, MVP now the had? last Now, the last award that we got was RG3 Rookie of the Year. Mm-hmm. That was the last, like, t- a player award that we got. I'm not sure you guys have a MVP. Season besides, MVP. Besides the uh, the kicker <laughs> the in, the, in the strike year. Oh, man. I, I mean, it's the truth. Don't shoot the messenger here. Let's see if I can pull it up. All right, here we go, folks. We'll scroll back through the years. <clears throat> back to back. Thousand won it after the kicker did. So there you go, Hunter. So Thousand saved your saved the embarrassment of the franchise. <laughs> and what I was about to say, folks, you're looking down oh, here in man. the middle. Uh Joe Theismann, 1983 MVP. What you'll notice right before that is Mark Mosley, the Redskins MVP. That is a kicker. So when people start throwing out MVP awards and and how important they are, granted it was the uh, it was the strike season. I think he actually set the NFL record for points that year. They might have because that's the only thing they could do was kick. Mosley was the MVP. Ken Anderson the year before that, and Cleveland Brown great Brian Sipe was the 1980 MVP. True or false, Hunter Brian Sipe has as many Super Bowl wins as Cam Newton. <laughs> and MVPs. That's why. That's how I got to re- re- yeah. reward that. And MVPs. True. As Cam Newton. Yeah, uh, we talked about these MVPs the other day. How only one mm-hmm. uh, has won a su- uh, uh, Only six have won a Super Bowl and an MVP in the same season. It hasn't happened since the 1990 season. Kurt Warner and the St. Louis Rams. Hey, uh, a Ram won it three straight years, but Hunter, after that first year, they changed the uniforms to gold and never never won the Super Bowl again. Mm. You can't change your Super Bowl uniform. No. I you mean, you, they just I, – I fully I fully blame it on that. I, fu- I 100% blame it blame it on the on the uniform change. They don't – Rams fans don't really go there, but I, I'll go there. <laughs> you, can't, you can't jinx it like that. So Even that- though I'm not a – I'm really not a superstitious person at all. But for some reason, that bothered that me. That bothered you? That really bothered that me. That bothered you. Like, buy all of our Super Bowl stuff, and then two months yeah. later, hey, here's some new gear. Buy our new color that we've never had before, right. gold. It's, yeah. not like, it's not like gold was a, is a St. Louis color. It was just weird. Just weird to me. All right, Hunter, any more XFL thoughts? 
looking forward to this weekend? I, I am looking forward to this weekend. Hopefully, I'll be able to sit down and watch more uh, like uh, extended parts of the game. I was able to at least watch at least first or mm-hmm. second half of games, uh, especially the St. Louis game because it was later in the day, and, and they had it on at the restaurant I went to. It was kind of a sports bar, and, th- and that's what it's going to take for the league to really shine is instead of these sports bars, you know, maybe putting on a college game, it's going to be like St. Mary's versus, mm. you know, another random team. And yeah, not, that, a, not a big game like <laughs> North Carolina Duke is. There was there was some basketball games on my regular television Yeah, during the XFL games. I'm like, I'd much rather be watching the XFL than... That's what I'm saying. 